booktube and welcome back to my channel today i'm here with my november wrap up so i read seven books seven I've gone very yellow i feel like i suddenly have jaundice no that's terrid terry bad terry bad what is with this lighting I mean, my skin looks fantastic but i'm not this color i look very pale hello I don't know if you guys can see, I have rearranged my shelves. I'm back in my office, not in my bedroom, not in my kids' bedroom. I'm trying to do that color thing. Yeah, that color thing. But the problem is that my shelves, they're like this. So, I need a straight shelf like that to actually get it right. Right? So, this month I did a read-along with two good friends of mine. We started reading the Mortal Instruments series again because I read... The first three or four books years ago when they came out and I, I only rated them about a three back then I didn't really love them needless to say I'm starting right from the beginning and I'm going in reading order as recommended on Cassandra Clare's website obviously we started with City of Bones and and thoroughly enjoyed it and the funny thing that I'm finding with this reread is that I'm enjoying the Mortal Instruments so much more the second time around I think possibly I read them too soon after Twilight at that stage of my life I don't think anything would have compared to Twilight. So anything that didn't have an Edward Cullen in it was a, just a colossal disappointment. Now that I'm rereading it with Jessie and Monique, I'm really, really enjoying the story and I'm enjoying Jace more. I find Clary a really, really well-rounded, well-written character. We finished City of Bones and then we moved straight on to City of Ashes. So um, yeah, we read City of Ashes 2 in November and we are now busy reading City of Glass. But that's going to be in my December haul. But I enjoyed this book. Look, the whole Jason Clary brother sister thing. It's brilliant in that Cassandra Clare's taken a trope and made it Forbidden Love. That's really, there's a good reason for it. Um, but it also just makes me feel icky. And I can't remember because, I, like I said, I only read up until book three or four the last time. I th he's not her brother. That I kind of remember that he's not her brother. But still, because it's been so long and I'm, I'm reading it again, I kind of feel like he is. It's just... Yes. <laughs> anyway, there's very little, obviously, that I can probably tell you about City of Ashes. I'm sure everybody's read it. Um, but yes, so this was book two. Another book that I read in November that I don't have with me is The Break by Marion Keys. The people over at Penguin Random House were kind enough to send that one to me and I really, really enjoyed it. You guys know I've spoken about this before when I read Finding Alice that I'm very pro-marriage, I'm pro-people staying married. The break is the story of a woman whose husband basically drops a bomb on, her, um, blah, 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 bomb on her and says, you know, I need a six month break. I think it was six months, I can't remember the exact time, but it, it was a very specific period of time. So he's going to go off and find himself and whatever the case may be and she's gonna stay behind with the kids and when he gets back they are going to be happy still and they are going to pick up where they left off this is his theory not hers anyway she kind of goes along with it she's a bit stunned and then she says well so tell me then does this mean during this period of separation are we monogamous he's like no yeah no no that's not it's not gonna work you know i'm not gonna go out of my way to look for something but if something happens then but i'm still coming back to you and everything's still gonna be fine i was kind of gobsmacked going how the hell man anyway so the story goes on and then what kind of happens is it's this woman's journey to her own self-discovery because she's been with her husband for so long she's also become complacent she probably needs the break really as much as he does except that she obviously doesn't call for it because she's stuck in her routine Ultimately, gets to a point where she starts to wonder, does she want him to come back? So, I was thrown for a loop. Things started happening. It was, it, but it was just, it was a really good read. It was a delightful read. If you like Marion Keys, if you're a fan of Marion Keys, Sophie Kinsella, that crowd, definitely get the break. I highly recommend it. Also sent to me by Penguin Random House was the Arsehole Survival Guide. Can you, can you 
Can you see that? Yeah. Also, survival guide. This is a book that teaches you how to deal with people who treat you like dirt. Admittedly, going into this book, I expected it to be very funny. The title kind of implies it's going to be super funny. I do think that what this book should have been called is how to deal with controversial people in your workplace. That's really what it should have been called because it is quite a serious book. It actually is, I think, aimed at people in business who are genuinely having a difficult time in the workplace. This author did write a book previously called, um, it was also something about ourselves. He says he's known as the asshole guy. That's pretty funny. I'm obviously not in a workplace, so I didn't kind of take much from it. You guys have seen my office, right? It's just me. So if I'm surviving an asshole, it's gonna be. It was a cool book, but I mean, it didn't really apply to me and I don't know how many of you it could apply to. So if that sounds like something that you'd want to read, if you know, but don't be misled. The title is funny. The book, not so much funny. Artemis. Again, Penguin were kind enough to send this to me. I was so excited to read Artemis. I read The Martian. I can't remember if it was 2015 or 2016. I gave it five stars. It was one of my favorite books of the year. Andy Weir, I think, is just so, so, so clever. And I love The Martian. So when I saw Artemis, I was straight away like, yes, yes, yes. I need to get my hands on this book. Like, I want to review this book. So I was thrilled to get it. And also the fact that it was from a female protagonist this time. I just thought, oh my gosh, like I've got so much, this is so exciting, we got Andy Weir, we got a female protagonist, like, I have arrived. Artemis is the story of Jazz. Jazz lives on the moon. Artemis is the first human city on the moon. She's been living there since she was six, she's now 26. She's from Saudi Arabian heritage, but she's a little bit loose. Her father obviously is a little bit disappointed. And Jazz is just like a bit of a wild child. She's a bit rebellious. She supplements a very measly income she makes as a porter, which means she delivers stuff on the moon. She supplements her income by smuggling in contraband items for what I'd say is called the lunar elite, so the wealthiest people on the moon. It's basically like a bit of a hush story and Jazz gets hired to do a job that requires her to blow up some really expensive equipment for a really big corporation and Everything goes tits up and Jazz is the next thing on the run for her life. People are dying around her. Story-wise, brilliant. As always, you can feel Andy Weir, like straight away, you could, if you read this book and you didn't know the author's name, you would straight away call it as Andy Weir because the, um, he has that really distinctive style, doesn't he? And that love of all things scientific. And this has still got that. It's still got that science. And I find it so funny when he does his science malarkey stuff because it's just like, how is this man so smart? So love that. I will say, in my personal opinion and as a huge fan of Andy Weir, I think that he should stick to a male point of view because writing in the first person as a female, I think he, he kind of got it a little bit wrong. Jazz sometimes annoyed me and I, I think it was because I felt like Jazz was thinking the way a man thinks women think. And honestly, we don't think like that. We're not that concerned about our promiscuity and what people think of us. And if we're running and fighting for our lives, we're not really checking out the abs on the hot man. I hope he doesn't think that we think like that. Other than that, I found that a little bit annoying. Like the main character annoyed me a little bit, but it was a really fun romp. It's an action adventure on the moon. If you love The Martian, you have to read this book. I still recommend it. Not really Jazz's fault, Andy's. This Mortal Coil, I actually just finished this last night and I gotta say, I was gobsmacked. It's kind of like a sci-fi dystopia. This book has a lot of tech stuff in it that I didn't really understand. I didn't get it, but it didn't bother me. So um, there's a lot of genetics involved and people are, we're different. We have like our own little like circuit boards and apps that can get downloaded into ourselves. There was quite a deep, deep message in this book when I got to the part where it was talking about this organization that has basically taken over um, the world. What are they called? Cartaxis. And Cartaxis does not want any free will app software going around, which means that basically they don't want unauthorized apps, things that could make people change the way they look, the way they, um, sound so they could grow wings they could change the color of their hair their skin their teeth they they could 
grow a second arm. They could go go gadget finger and you know. So they don't want them to do that. And to me, that was really like a really powerful message in a dystopian setting. Obviously, you have to look. There's always a, there's always a message about how even now society doesn't like people to be different. The other thing that I found really shocking, but it stood out for me, was the actual dystopia of the dystopia. So it's a virus, right? And I don't think I'm giving any spoilers. So there's this virus and everybody in the world is basically dying. And this virus is spread by the people that have the virus blowing up in a pink cloud. When they blow up, every cell in their body explodes and then it kind of floats around and infests, infects the next person. So I found that really quite disturbing. And then the only way to be immune to this virus is to eat the flesh of an infected person. Kind of like a reverse zombieism. Look, I found this a very original dystopian sci-fi and I found it, it was a very unique concept. It is the start in a brand new series. So that's a bummer. I didn't see that coming. You yeah. know, I won't read the first book in a series unless the series is out. Yeah, that actually happened to me more than once this month. That is This Mortal Coil. My favorite book for November, yes, November, was Nevermore. So I bought this book at the recommendation of Lloyd over at the Books Collective. He had a copy and he read it and he loved it and he said, you have to read this book. So this book is, is purported, 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 claims that it is like, it's like a Harry Potter, like if you like Harry Potter, you'll like Nevermore. I've seen so many Harry Potter coattail writing books that I don't believe that. You can't just say, oh, if you like Harry Potter, you'll like this. So I am very cynical when it comes to anyone using the HP um, fandom to, to sell their book. This is the first time since Harry Potter that I agree with that statement. This book is delightful. I love that Morrigan Crow is a little girl, so, but there are so many parallels between this and Harry Potter. You, I can see the Dursleys and Morgan's parents, well her father. I can see the Ron, or should I say the Hermione, but obviously Morgan's little friend is a guy. You've got the nemesis, she's a girl, you, whereas Draco was a boy. You've got Jupiter, who to me is kind of like, I was kind of thinking he was like a Dumbledore because he's a guard and he kind of knows more about Morgan than she does. But then Lloyd said to me he thinks he's more like a Hagrid because he actually went and fetched her and like took her out of, of um, her world. So I think he's kind of like a boat. So he's like kind of a cool crossover between Dumbledore and Hagrid. So Morgan is a cursed child and she's going to die. She's destined to die on her 11th birthday. See also the number 11 there that also just like Harry Potter me. Just before this, the clock strikes 12, um, Jupiter North arrives in her house and basically tells her, no, 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 you are coming with me. You're not going to die. He lets her parents believe she's dead and he whisks her away in this very cool spider-like contraption to Nevermore, which is like a alternate galaxy, universe, whatever you want to call it, where children compete to join the Wondrous Society. The Wondrous Society is a society of people who all have these special gifts and abilities. So you don't know what Morrigan's gift is, neither does Morrigan, um, but she doesn't die. and. She then enters the trials. Really cute. The story unfolds so beautifully. I highly recommend this. Never mind the fact that the art, the cover art of this book is exquisite. It's probably my favorite cover of the year. It really is beautiful. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. If you're a Harry Potter fan, buy this book. I ain't lying. Anyway, you guys, thank you for watching. It's been amazing. That was my November wrap up i do have a haul because i did get a couple of really nice books i was going to include them in this video but i'm looking at the time and we have run way over schedule so i shall do that in a separate video lloyd and i are also in december filming our harry potter off so you guys need to keep your eye out for that and obviously root for me vote lissa okay i'll see you guys soon love you bye